insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 102. Another one of our creativity series. Today we're going to talking, be talking about writing. <clears throat> I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my creative and verbose co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, Maddie? I'm doing all right. So we're changing things up a little bit today. Uh, we are switching kind of to a spring-slash-summer uh, recording schedule. Uh, normally we record on Saturday morning. Uh, but right now it is Thursday evening. Yep. And we're going to be trying to record a podcast during the week this for the next few months here uh, so that we can have some time on the weekends. And uh, it also gives me a little extra time to edit the podcast and I'm not rushing to get them edited and out by Monday. Mm -hmm. uh, but despite the change in schedule for recording, we will be continuing to publish all of our new podcasts Monday mornings at 8 a.m. So, uh, today we're going to be talking about writing. This is the second one in our series on creativity. We did art last week. Uh, today we're going to be talking about your writing hobby, where you get to express your creativity in a different form. But before we get into that, let's uh, plug the show, if, we, if, if I can. Sure. Um, we do encourage folks to subscribe to the podcast. You can get video versions of the podcast and all of our podcasts listed as Insights into Things on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, and any place you can get a podcast these days. Audio versions of the podcast can be found listed as Insights into Teens, and they go live 8 a.m. Monday morning. So if you subscribe, you will get them as soon as they come out. We would also invite folks to uh, reach out and give us your feedback. Tell us what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong. Uh, we're always looking for uh, suggestions for show topics. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. Uh, you can hit us on Twitter. We are at insights underscore things. Uh, we are on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast and on Instagram at insights into things. Or you can go right to our website and give us feedback at www.insightsintothings.com. So today, we're first going to take a look at what some of the benefits are that creative writing offers to our teenagers. And then we're going to talk to Madison here about how she's developed her creative writing skills over the years and what she gets personally out of writing. And then finally, we'll take a look at where Madison's going with her writing what her future in creative writing might look like, and get some tips and advice for teens who might be interested in getting into creative writing. Ready to get started? Sure. All right. So why is creative writing important for teens? For this, we go to a website called simplek12.com. They say statistics show that reading helps develop your writing skills, but writing helps develop your cognitive growth, your organizational abilities, and the power to influence others through persuasion. In short, writing powers the brain. Mm -hmm. Studies show that children who practice creative writing more often are generally better in other subjects, too, like math, science, and languages. Challenging themselves to come up with creative thoughts and problem solve builds the confidence and discipline students need to succeed in all areas of life. And they go on to talk about a few areas where many, uh, a few of the many benefits that creative writing provides to our youth. Why don't you tell us about those? 
Okay, so the first is imagination and creativity. Creative writing encourages kids to exercise their creative minds and practice using their imaginations. It improves their ability to come up with alternatives. This broadens their thought process, process, which can lead to success in many areas, including problem solving and analysis. They also talk about improving self-expression. Children often have difficulty understanding and expressing how they feel. Through writing, children have a safe place to explore, and this can be a highly beneficial tool for expressing their feelings. Uh, next up is self-confidence. Writing gives children more opportunity more opportunity to exert themselves and their opinions and develop their voice. These developments can really strengthen their self-confidence. And finally, they talk about communication and persuasion skills. A well-written piece involves a lot of thought, planning, organization, and use of language to get a point across. This amounts to great practice for kids at laying out their thoughts and trying to clearly convince someone of their point of view. Creativity seems to diminish as we get older, which I can personally attest to. Those crazy stories of fairy tale princesses battling ferocious dragons to save the town later turns into business prose and you're writing PowerPoint presentations and stuff like that. So encourage your children to write, to be creative, to use their imagination, and to praise them when they do. Build their confidence to clearly communicate their point of view, their thoughts, and their feelings. So let me ask you, okay? So we've talked about improving imagination and creativity, improving self-expression, self-confidence, and your communication skills. Do you find that since you've been engaged in creative writing that you've improved these skills or you've seen improvement in these areas? I mean, definitely. Of course, with imagination and creativity, I definitely think creative writing has helped me keep my imagine my childish imagination alive. I'm 14 now, but I can still come up with crazy stories like I did when I was seven. Um, I definitely think creative writing helped keep my imagination al- alive, and um, of course, it's an- it's another way to express myself with art. So my creativity has also improved from that. Self-expression. Yeah, I do get a lot of points across. Um, a lot of times I actually like um, to make the characters more or less around the same age as me because I don't see a lot of 14 or 15 year olds being depicted in stories other than as teenage stereotypes. Um, and espe- And especially when I went through the years of between becoming a teenager, like 10 to, four, 10 to 13, um, I definitely like had a lot of struggles that I didn't think I'd have at that age, such as finding out where I was going to get clothes in the kids section or in the adult section. It was actually a pretty difficult. I actually had no idea that I was going to be facing that problem, and I kind of want to somewhat put that into the world as something that kids my age might deal with yeah and and, you know from my perspective i was always the type of person to i I always express myself better in writing and i've been writing um various forms of communication and media for well since i was probably your age and younger um i used to have writing sessions I, i wrote for the school newspaper i would write stories constantly i got into being a Star Wars fan myself, I got into writing fan fiction for that stuff. I used to have a whole series in grade school that I would write stories with a friend of mine with. I just, I really enjoyed writing, and I always have. And I see now in my professional life that that love of writing has really served me to help me communicate in my position as a manager. Um, it allows me to organize a department it allows me to mediate discussions and solve problems and solve uh, conflicts within the department Uh, there are a lot of skills that i have today that ironically until i read this article i never really attributed them to 
my writing passion. Um, and, and I'm kind of getting to the point where I'm expanding that now because we play, uh, we started playing Dungeons and Dragons with your brother, Sam. And this weekend is my first weekend to actually DM for our group. So I've spent the last, I don't know, two months, uh, writing various quests and side quests and stuff like that and trying to put a creative campaign together. And, and I guess we'll get to put it to the test this weekend, but, Again, that level of creativity is something that comes from that that desire for writing. Mm -hmm. So I, I love the fact that you picked up on writing as well. I love sitting down and hearing you tell me your stories and reading them to me. And I love collaborating with you on them. And I even see that passion in your schoolwork too. Uh, when you, like for instance, you're working on a project now. And that project for your ELA class requires you to write a journal. Mm -hmm. And you're not just writing a journal. You're trying to emulate the time period in which the story was set in the 1800s to lend that level of authenticity. You're doing the research to find the words that would be, have been used in a journal that was written at the time. So that level of authenticity that you're striving for is a testament to the passion you have for writing, and it's very impressive. <laughs> yeah, also the fact that you always seem to make fun of me. Like, whenever I say, hey, I need to write something for school, you're like, oh, have you already done, like, five pages on it? Because I, I can't really finish a story easily. I have to have a lot of pages for that. And you know what? It's funny. I do make fun of you for that because... I wish I was your ELA teacher, but I wish I wasn't your ELA teacher because I would love to have a person, a student with your level of passion for writing, but having to grade so many essays and stuff, I don't want to have to sit down with every essay that's 20 pages long. Yeah. But I have the same problem. When I start writing, I have a very clear idea of what the story is, but I have a very difficult time concluding my stories so there have been tons of stories through the years that i've written 95 percent, but i just haven't been able to get them across the finish line uh, so that's always something that i've struggled with too mm. so anyway i think we've established why writing is important let's take a quick break and we'll come back and we'll talk about how you are developing your creative writing skills For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Civ Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Starforge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. Today we're talking about another one of our creativity topics. We're talking about creative writing. So Madison, how old were you when you started putting your stories into writing? Oh. Oh. It. Uh, I don't exactly have a year at w how old I was specifically when I started putting my stories into writing. but. I was young enough to have grammar mistakes, um, and not exactly have a coherent flowing story. Um, I'll say maybe the first story I ever wrote was maybe when I was seven. Okay, that's pretty young. Yeah, um, I think that was when I really first started getting into it, even though my imagination peaked e 
a lot. Um, right. I never really put it into story so much, um, but the one time I did, uh, it was interesting. So what was the biggest inspiration for those earliest stories for you that, that kind of made you go from just creating them in your imagination to putting them to paper and, and preserving them? Well, one was when I had made a minion story. Um, you guys had gotten, I had gotten some minion stickers and they had all sorts of images on them. And I kind of decided to give myself a little bit of a challenge, say, hey, make a story with those images. And I did. Um, and, uh, the end result is, uh, interesting, but it's what I'm going to consider my very first work of art. Okay. Work of creative writing. So when you write, there's always sort of uh, a genre or a primary focus that you tend to write in usually. What is yours? Is yours based on reality? Is it fantasy? Is it a day in the life type stuff? What is your primary focus when you write? Are you, are you writing fiction or nonfiction? What, give us some idea. I'm writing fiction. I've never really been a fan of writing nonfiction. I've never actually been a fan of nonfiction books in general. I, I just, I don't like facts. I like creating stuff. Um, as for the actual genre, I'm kind of mixed between reality and fantasy. I kind of make it a day in the life of a fantasy character or just a regular person. It's kind of interesting when I think about so it. So like a reality version of a fantasy adventure. Yeah. Interesting. So have you developed your own characters, though? Your own backstories and worlds and so forth? Or do you borrow from existing properties... Like I know we had talked before during our art artwork podcast that you did your comics as SpongeBob comics. Mm -hmm. Have you done your own characters from a creative writing standpoint? Um, yeah, I have done that. A lot of times, um I the one story I am doing, I actually write a script for it for each episode. And those characters are my own original characters. Um I have backstories for them. I kind of have the entire series and even another season planned out uh, for it. Um, I have all the characters. I know what they are. I know who they are and what they want, stuff like that. I just haven't fully wrote them down yet in, this, in a script yet. Um, okay. So we've talked about the fact that you've drawn comics in the past, which, you know, really is, is storytelling in a graphical format. You know, that's why they're called graphic novels. How have comics affected your storytelling through creative writing? I guess um, comics kind of taught me about uh, the kind of stirred me away from good, from all good storytelling to having possibly a bad ending to a story or basically consequences of one's actions. Interesting. Um, a lot of time. Basically, it taught me how to make drama, I guess, if you, if you really want to push it. Um, I, I definitely think that it stopped from like saying, oh, hey, everything's fine and dandy to, okay, things happen, reality, you know, fun. Okay. Well, that makes, that makes sense. What benefits do you personally gain from writing your stories down from the act of creative writing? Is there something there? Is there a personal satisfaction? Is there personal growth? What is it that you feel you gain from it the most when you write creatively? A lot of it um, has to do with the fact that I like kind of putting myself in someone else's shoes. And I like that I get to put myself in a character's shoes. One of my favorite point of views for stories is first person when the person is talking directly to uh, the reader. And I like that perspective a lot more than third person, the all knowing, that kind of thing. Because I like seeing the character's thought process and how, and how they can kind of be relatable. Um, which is kind of what I like to do with some of my characters. I want to make them relatable and you can understand their motives and goals. Um, so, yeah, I get a lot of satisfaction from just kind of 
playing the part of someone else. It's kind of like escaping reality, but going into someone else's reality. Interesting. It's an interesting part for that matter. So of the stuff that you've written in the past and what you're writing today, do you share it with other people and do they enjoy reading uh, your creative writing? Well, when I did have comics, I did share them with the kids at um, Aftercare, and they did like them. Um, as for my actual stories, I really only share them with my friends and you guys. Um, I don't, of course, do to everything now. I really haven't shared it with actual people. I've never thought to put a story online because I've never really thought that, hey, I'm that advanced. Right. Okay. Interesting. So, you know, in learning about storytelling, either by doing it yourself, reading stories, or your ELA classes, you understand that there's different aspects of storytelling. Mm -hmm. You've got character development, world building, plot twist, dialogue, you know, general story elements. Of those, what do you think is your strongest point when you're writing creatively? Hmm. Um, general story elements I'm probably fine with. I don't excel at it, but I'm not bad at it. Uh, plot twists? Um, I've been a bit rough a few times. I've gotten better, but still not, like, great to the point where I can call it my best wor part. World building? I mean, I kind of do that, but I don't focus on it too much. So that just leaves character development and dialogue. I'd say I'm kind of equal with both of them. When I had read you my script the one time, you said that you noticed the dialogue was really nice and it was pretty realistic and you could understand all the characters. Uh, character development? I do um have character, like, story arcs for my characters, and I know how to show aspects of their personality. So I'd say I'm kind of between with both of them. Okay. Is there a particular style <clears throat> of story that you prefer, like hero quests or mysteries, day in the life, comedies, tragedies, you know, could run the whole gambit. But is there a particular type of story that, that you feel you're most comfortable with? Um, I'd say the day in the life is the best one there. Hero quests... Um, I mean, I'm working on a D and D story, so maybe I'll get better at that. But I don't really write that too often. Mysteries, I've never really done. Um, I've never really tried a mystery story. Honestly, to me, mysteries are just plot twists in a way. Um, comedies, I don't entirely try to make my work funny. Tragedies. I don't inherently make them sad, so I'd say Day in the Life is probably the closest. Okay, that makes perfect sense. So what about the process? When you're going to write a story, you know, obviously I'm, I'm assuming you've been inspired, you've come up with an idea. What do you do next? Do you just start writing? Do you outline? Do you build characters? What's, what's the next step when you're going to sit down and, and actually write a story? Well, I try to develop the idea a bit more. Um, I develop the characters, I develop the story a bit more, like, I use the plot wave chart to kind of, like, paste my story in order to, um, make it more coherent. Um, and then when I do have it down, when I do have a lot of the story elements down, I try writing, uh, them out so I don't forget them, and then I eventually try to piece them into a story. Okay, that makes sense. See, when I write, my, I don't know if it's the inspiration part or the writing part, I think of of a story in scenes. And I'll imagine certain scenes in a movie, and those will be the first things that I write about. And then I have to creatively go back and stitch the stuff in between to put those scenes together to make that cohesive story. Okay. Um, so there's a lot of outlining that I do. Uh, there is a lot of character development. I'll, I'll just start sketching out character profiles. Who are they? Where they came from? What's their background? What's their motivation? And I do as a technique a lot of times called mind mapping. Have you ever heard of that? Um, not that I know of. So mind mapping is sort of a visual representation of the story. It's a visual way to outline. 
So you kind of start off with a, you know, a topic. And then from that topic, I'll branch off one of my scenes. And then from that scene, I'll branch off characters, I'll branch off environments, I'll branch off backgrounds, supporting characters, and so forth. And they start to all branch out from the middle here. And then each scene kind of stretches off from that way, too. And then you can sit there and look at it and understand how the different pieces flow against each other. Okay. That's good for, like, a real quick idea to keep a a high-level idea of the story flow. But I find outlining tends to be the easiest way for me because you can put a lot more detail in that way. That makes sense. So you talked about the plot wave. Now, is that... Describe what a plot wave is for us. Um, so a plot wave is kind of like a mountain, if you will. At the bottom is exposition, where you get introduced to the characters, the setting, the time, that kind of thing. Um, and then the next part is the rising action. That's when the conflict is introduced, and it's going to be scenes and part of the story leading up to the top of the mountain which is known as the climax, which is the biggest point of tension where, like, the, where, like, like, the biggest scene, like, maybe the twist is revealed, or it's basically the biggest part of the story. And then next up is the falling action on the other side of the mountain where, um, everything's, where it's basically just a reaction from the climax, cooling everything down, and at the very bottom is the resolution when the conflict is finally resolved, and it's basically the end of the story. And this is this is a concept that you learned from ELA, right? Mm-hmm. So you're learning things in school right now that are actually helping to drive your writing skills. Yep. That's awesome. Well, that was all I had for this segment here. Let's take a quick break, and we'll come back, and then we'll talk about what the future might bring for your writing. Okay. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news will give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. We're talking creative writing today. So let's talk about what the future might hold for you and your creative writing. So before we get into any of the future stuff, where are you now with writing? Are you in the middle of any projects? Do you have a couple of projects going on? And could you describe what these projects might entail? Well, I have a couple projects I'm working on. One, of course, is the series I'm working on. I'm working on the script for episode two, um, and, um, I'm hoping to have at least 12 episodes in the first season, so I'm gonna be working on that for a little while. Um, I have a couple other, like, small things here and there that I'm working on, but overall, that's the main thing. Okay. So what about publishing? You had said that, you know, most of the stuff that you do, you kind of restrict it to your friends and family right now. Have you ever considered publishing any of your creative writing online or for distribution in print or anything like that? I mean, the one thing uh, I have been thinking about maybe trying to put my, um, my, uh, my one series out, um, but I don't entirely know how to turn it into a book because every episode focuses on a different perspective of another character. So unless I was going to post the scripts, I wasn't, I'm not entirely sure how I would uh, make a 
publish them as a book. So does does the school have any kind of writing club or school paper or anything like that that you might publish to? Um, there is the school, uh, the newspaper club, I think. Um, maybe that could be a way to um, publish something, but again, I'm not entirely sure how that will go. Sure. Well, it's worth looking into at least, right? Mm-hmm. So are there other writing forms or styles that you've not written in yet that you might want to try? You talked about not really writing much in the way of comedy. Is that something you'd like to get into at some point in time? I mean, possibly, but comedy, of course, is subjective, so I might not try that one out. Maybe if I could try a tragedy, I could actually... I actually do think maybe I'd try a tragedy and see how that would work, as well as... Learning more about the Hero Quest. Of course, I'm working on the one um, uh, D and D story, so hopefully, I'll get more experience from the Hero Quest. So, yeah, there are different genres that I might try out. Okay. Now we've talked about whether you write fiction or nonfiction. You say you don't really like writing nonfiction. How about something like uh, a biography or something in uh, a news media format where you're writing about? an event or a review or something like that? Would you be interested in trying anything like that kind of outside your comfort zone? Hmm. I I can see myself maybe trying that out at some point, but for now I think I'll stick with fiction. Um, Although it does sound cool to make a biography or news media style, um, I... Right now, I think I'm fine staying in my comfort zone at the moment. I might branch out later on. Who knows? How about something like essays on our podcast that we do? You think that would be something you'd be uh, interested in, in doing or a challenge you'd want to take on? I mean, I'm not bad at writing nonfiction. Um, most of the time for school essays, when they're not about when, like, we have to describe something, I I write pretty well for that. It's just I don't entirely, a lot of times I don't enjoy writing nonfiction, but I might try writing essays for the podcast. So what about careers? Do you think you might be interested in pursuing a career that involves writing of some sort? I mean, I can definitely see trying to get a career that includes writing. Um, And if not, I'll probably use it as a hobby and maybe then sell the books, um, like publish them and maybe make a little bit of money off of them. I'm not sure. I'm still kind of confused about what I want to be when I grow up, so. Sure. Well, and there's other opportunities for creative writing. You could work in a marketing department. You could do copy edits for web pages and stuff like that. Um, You know, I've worked in web development, and and one of the tasks that I had in web development was uh, doing copy editing. So a, a client comes to you and they have this idea of how they want their web page worked out, but they don't have the content. So through a series of interviews and discussions and maybe looking at what some of their literature looks like, you then write what the comp- content on the website is. Mm. So that's another option that you have from a professional standpoint. Okay. Um, obviously, reporter. You know, if you want to go out and, and do investigations or you want to do reviews, um, and a lot of, lot of stuff like that happens on uh, YouTube these days. Uh, but you could write for a magazine. You know, if you like um, technology, for instance, you could review the latest technology and products and write stuff like that. Would would something like that hold your interest at all? Possibly, of course. Still kind of in the cre- still kind of in the fiction standpoint. So I don't know. The future still interests. The future's still going to be there, and I need to figure out, and I still need to figure out what I'm going to do. True, true. I'm not trying to push you in any direction here. Relax. Okay, okay. <laughs> not asking you to make any decisions. Just saying that, you know, there are options that are out there. Yeah. So what advice would you have for teens who might be interested in pursuing an interest in writing? Well, hmm. So... I don't entirely have advice for nonfiction um, entirely. 
Um, I'd say just learn the nonfiction signposts and possibly include them, as well as do your research doing during it. Um, but for fiction, I'd say you first need to learn about the plot wave map and the different elements and kind of figure out what kind of stories you want to make. Um, and, um, then I'd, and I'd also say that if you have an idea for a story, write it down. Well, not like write it down, but like write your idea down and then you can branch off of it when you have the chance. And then you can possibly turn it into a story and, you know, you make it. And yeah, just turn your idea into a story. Um, writing is a lot about uh, creativity and although you can learn the different methods for creative writing, it's all about what you want to do and how you want to write. So when you write, what tools do you use? Like we had talked about <clears throat> in the in the graphic art uh, podcast we did last time, uh, we talked about the fact that you did a lot of digital art on your tablet. Mm -hmm. So when you write creatively, are you using a notebook and writing it down? Are you using just a simple word processor? Is there a specific tool that you use? How do you do it? Do you did do it digitally or do you do it analog, writing it down by hand? Um, now I've been kind of typing them out. I do sometimes write down some of uh, the ideas that I want to keep in mind. Um, so I'd say kind of both. Those are main, those are my main tools. Um, so yeah, they're kind of simple, I guess. So when you work, you're working in a controlled environment at home, in your room, in the kitchen or something like that. Yeah. Do you think you would you would be comfortable going to a park or something like that to draw inspiration from your surroundings and write in an environment like that? Do you think something like that would work for you? I mean, the fact that I was able to come up with an entire story about two squirrels who were just standing while we had just driven by after my orthodontist appointment, I'm pretty sure I'd be able to find some inspiration from the park. I'm sure you would. Well, that was all the questions that I had. Uh, did you have anything else that you wanted to, to add to the discussion? Um, did I miss anything you wanted to talk about? Any other advice you want to give? Um, I guess I'll just save the advice for the closing remarks. Okay. Well... We're ready for the closing remarks. <laughs> well, let's do a transition and have you come back with your closing remarks. Go for your closing remarks and shout outs. Okay, so to anyone out there who does want to do creative writing, um, like I said before, it's all about y your own, th what, y what you want to make. Um, I would suggest at least learning a bit more about how to make creative writing and, um, stuff like that. And of course, always, and a lot of times I'll say try to, um, get inspiration from your surroundings. Um, and I always like coming up with stories on the spot, and I can come up with stories, like, out of thin air. And I know a lot of people aren't like that, but try it out and see how it works. Okay, I think that is sage advice. So that was all we had for today. Uh, I want to thank you for watching. Uh, we would also invite you once again to subscribe to the podcast. You can get audio versions of the podcast listed as Insights into Teens. Video versions of all of our podcasts are listed as Insights into Things. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Amazon, and any place that you can get a podcast. Our podcast do go live Mondays at 8 a.m. We would also invite you to give us some feedback. We're always looking for topics to talk about. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can hit us on Twitter at insights underscore things. You can get us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. On Instagram, we are at insights into things. We stream on Twitch six days a week. If you are a Amazon Prime subscriber, you get a free Twitch Prime monthly subscription. I, we'd appreciate it if you threw that our way. You can also reach out to us on our website at www.insightsintothings.com. And you.
And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights and Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights and Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother Sam. That's it. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you.